வெல்கம் பேக் குட் மார்னிங் எவ்ரி ஒன் இந்த லாஸ்ட் கிளாஸ் வி டிஸ்கஸ்டு த போயம் எ திங் ஆஃப் பியூட்டி இஸ் எ ஜாய் ஃபார் எவர் பை ஜான் கீட்ஸ் இந்த லாஸ்ட் கிளாஸ் வி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் த பேக்ரவுண்ட் ஆஃப் த போயம் அண்ட் எ டிடால் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் அபவுட் த லைஃப் அண்ட் ஒர்க் of the poet john keats so let us recollect the key points that we have discussed in the last class this poem is from keats famous work endymion this passage is taken from is endymion a mythology Endymion is the name of a shepherd who fell in love with the moon goddess Selene and the poet renamed it to another one Cynthia So let us start the poem in detail A thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness but will keep a bore quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing so a thing of beauty is a joy forever so this is the hard core or the kernel part the central part of this poem a thing of beauty is a joy for ever and ever as i learned in the last class the poet says that beauty stays forever beauty never fades away beauty never vanish rather beauty increases with the passing of time so the perception of the poet regarding beauty is that it never goes over with the passage of time see how nice and beautiful presentation a thing of beauty is a joy forever and ever and the poet in a lucid manner in a vivid and a clear manner explains that beauty never fades away beauty never fades away so you just recollect what we learned in the last class and uh, you know you go back to nature or take shelter in the lap of nature you know only nature can save man from ruin only nature can save man from total destruction so take shelter in the lap of nature because nature is bestowed with beauty god's blessings so here the poet john keats highlights that <coughs> a thing of beauty is a joy forever so you keep in mind according to john keats beauty never fades away rather it increases with the passage of time so the hard core or the perception of the poet regarding beauty is that it never goes off you keep this point in your mind in your innermost heart beauty never goes off beauty never goes off with the passage of time rather it beautifies more and more it beautifies more and more for the poet beauty is like a beautiful shady tree under whose shade all the creatures can sleep peacefully all the creatures can enjoy good health 
all the creatures can sleep well so let us move to the poem a thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases and it will never pass into nothingness but will keep a bore quiet for us a beautiful shade quiet for us and it provides watch it provides good sleep it provides sweet dreams it provides health and it pro uh, provides good health so this is what the poet says in the uh, first stanza and if we move to the literary devices used in this stanza first of all you can see the rhyme scheme that is the usage of nerve key sleep etc the rhyme scheme used here and also another device used here is alliteration you know oh, i hope that you know uh, alliteration that is the use of uh, consonant sounds at the start of uh, two words which are close in series for example uh, sleep sweet etc so uh, once again i recollect the key points that we learned in the first stanza uh, a thing of beauty is a joy forever and in the first stanza the poet says that a beauty is a stays forever it uh, in never fades away it increases day by day the perception of the poet regarding beauty is that it never goes off it didn't never vanish it didn't never disappear with the passage of time rather it beautifies more and more for the poet beauty is like a beautiful shady tree you know a tree provides shade and a tree provides a beautiful atmosphere and that beautiful atmosphere or that tree provides a comfort to all the creatures and they can sleep enjoy good health and sleep peacefully so you keep in mind the key points of the first stanza then let's next we can move to the second stanza therefore on every morrow are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the old spite of despondence of the inhuman dirts of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and our darkened ways made for our searching in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the power from our dark spirits see therefore on every morrow we are writing a flowery band to bind us to the earth the poet says that every day it is the beauty which fills us with the spirit to life every day beauty encourages us beauty inspire us beauty propel us for a good life it to provides the inspiration the encouragement the courage the capacity and the caliber to live so in the first in the the first part of the second stanza therefore on every morrow we are writing a flowery band to bind us to the earth spite of despondence of the inhuman dust so i repeat the first part of the second stanza the poet says that every day each and every day it is beauty that propels us it is beauty that inspire us it is beauty that uh, 
provide enthusiasm to continue our life here on earth it is beauty which builds the desire in us to live through in the midst of this sad moments as i said you earlier earth you know earth is a cruel place to live in innumerable problems numberless problems sad moments and cruel experiences surround us and happy experiences surround us cruel experiences surround us sad experiences surround us but even in the midst of this sad and unhappy experiences we are moving with more vigor more enthusiasm more courage and capacity why the poet says that even in the midst of this despondency even in the midst of sad moments we are moving with vigor and vitality why the poet is saying only because of beauty it is the beauty which builds us the desire it is beauty it builds us the enthusiasm and elan to live here so we face the challenges we face the sad moments we face the cruel people and we face old and happy moments because we are energized by beauty so here the poet wants to say that without beauty the earth will be a cruel place to live in so the poet says without beauty earth is a cruel place to live in we know if we examine the beauty of nature if we look nature we can see beautiful flowers we can see valleys we can see the twittering of the uh, uh, birds and we can enjoy fragrance of sweet smelling flowers so how nice beautiful really fantastic wonderful and we enjoy all these things and we all these beautiful things gives us energy gives us capacity and caliber to face all the challenges all the sad moments all the cruel experiences that we face day by day so here the poet wants to say that without beauty the earth will be full of cruel people full of sad experiences and gloomy moments so beauty vanishes everything beauty removes everything and we when we look at a rose flower covered with dew drops a beautiful rose flower covered with dew drops our whole mind will be transported into the realm of celestial joy inexplicable joy and we will see wonders utopia this flower will transport as to utopia of never never land wonderful things so it is the beauty which is created by god and see made uh, in the last part of the second stanza of all the unhealthy and our darkened days made for our searching eyes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall darkness from our dark spirits then who created all these things poet says that it is the beauty which is created by god it is created by god and here the poet to feel magnetized is lay flat in front of god almighty because it is 
the beauty which is created by god which helps us to remove the sadness from our hearts when our heart filled with the sorrow or bad experiences and god's presence remove the sadness from our hearts who created all these beautiful things and here we can see in a rose flower actually a rose flower is a replica of god as i said to you earlier in the last class i mentioned that our god is the god of mercy our god is the god of compassion intervention mercy amity and blessing and at the same time this god is a powerful god omnipotent god omnipresent god all powerful god almighty god and that god is not a mere god that god is the creator of the whole universe that god is the creator of sun moon uranus neptune pluto and he is not a mere god so that god blesses that god creates these beautiful things here on earth so the poet says it is the beauty which is created by god helps us to remove the sadness from our hearts it will wipe out the sadness pain and agony from our hearts see what a wonderful presentation the poet says that god's the creation of god's beautiful things removes sadness we are here we are great the poet is saying that we are great and we are here to do great things and we can do great things if we are focusing on the beautiful things created by god and don't look at the negative things but instead look the positive things beautiful things created by god and if we look on this beautiful things created by god it will propel us it will en- uh, en- charge us encourage us ignite us for what to enjoy the beautiful things so actually the poet is providing a positive energy injecting positive energy so he is injecting positive energy to the readers so let me recollect the key points that we learned in the second stanza so listen therefore on every morrow we are reading are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the old spite despondence of the inhuman though of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and our darkened ways made for our searching yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the power from our darkness so you keep the main points in your mind despondence means a depressed stage gloomy a sad uh, moment moro the following day so the poet says that every day it is beauty which fills us with the spirit of energy it is beauty which builds the desire in us to continue our life to overcome sad moments and to face cruelty brutalities and atrocities from the part of these cruel people around us so here the poet wants to say that without beauty the earth will be full of cruel people without beauty the earth is a cruel place to live in without beauty the earth will be a very sad and gloomy place to live in so here the poet asked the question who created all this beautiful things it is the beauty which is created by god 
which is created by God. And we know, as I said to you, our God is the God of mercy. Our God is the God of compassion and mighty. So might, so this almighty God created everything. Nobody pay a pie for its creation. Everything is created by this almighty God. And when we face problem, the poet says, as it is the beauty which is created by God, which helps us to remove the sadness. Remove the pain and agony or gloom from our hearts. So, you focus on beautiful things. As students, always you focus on positive things. Always you focus on beautiful things. Always you follow beautiful things. And if you follow the beautiful things created by God, beautiful things, virtues and other values, definitely you will climb the ladder of success and reach the pinnacle of success. Instead, if you are focusing on negative things, if you are focusing on negative aspects or evil things, surely you will not achieve success. Instead, you will fall into the abysmal pit of despondency and you will perish. So, what we need is beauty. What we want to focus beauty because the creator gives this beauty as a panacea to overcome all our ills. So, my dear students, you focus on all things, keep the key points in your mind. Let us move to the next stanza. Such the sun, the moon, trees, old and young, sprouting a shady bone from simple shape, and such are daffodils. With the green world they live in and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make. When it's the hot season, the mid forest break. So in the third stanza, the poet gives us a list, a list of the beautiful things that encourage us, that protect us. Such are the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon. Boon means a blessing. See, here the poet describes the beautiful things. He gives us a list of beautiful things. A vivid list, a lucid list of beautiful things which are present on earth. These are the sun, moon, trees, flowers and the rivers. See, there are the sun burning and burning and burning and providing light, providing energy. And this is the best example of beauty, providing energy to the everything, the animate and inanimate objects in nature. So sun, then moon, beautify, provides beauty. How nice to watch moon, very beautiful, wonderful. We, will, we can enjoy the beauty of moon. Then trees, young and old trees, flowers. And he specifically mentioned the daffodils. I hope that all of you remember the first generation poet William Wordsworth's poem Daffodils. And in, uh, in the last class we have mentioned, we already mentioned that uh, poem. So, daffodils, flowers. When we are in the midst of these daffodils or uh, flowers, 
surely our whole mind will be transported into joy and here the point uh, mention the beautiful things you keep in mind sun moon trees flowers and rivers all these are the beautiful things and if you are observing all these beautiful things sure we will say fantastic marvelous wonderful such words will be spontaneously comes out from our innermost heart because all these things are beautiful so poet says that all these things are like a blessing sun is a blessing and who gave this blessing i said to that uh, our god is the god of blessing our god is the god of blessing and the god of blessing bestowed this sun the poet says that all these are blessing sun a blessing moon blessing trees flowers everything blessing bestowed on all the creatures see who gave moon poet says that all these things are like a blessing bestowed on all the creatures by of earth who gave all this blessing god i repeat nobody pay a pay for the creation of this world but we human beings we know we human beings are nothing and nobody me or mud and clay unmindful of all the things we are out of pride we are we think that we are controlling everything but we are nothing and nobody mere mud and clay we are forgetful of the creator we are ignoring the creator we are unmindful of the the creator of sun moon trees and flowers rivers we are not giving proper respect and reverence to the creator that is a problem we are facing today so again the poet describes that the trees provide us with their shade flowers provides us beauty and fragrance and rivers with their coolness during the hot summers so all these are the beauties of nature which are like a boon for us which are a boon for us a blessing for us so keep all these things in your mind let us learn the next stanza in the next class keep all these things in your mind thank you